Hey guys, I doing? It's Kev Tech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over common command prompts that you'll do on Windows 10, 11, Windows operating systems. Obviously, you knew, you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. So today I want to go over common commands that you would run if you're going to work IT or IT support. Um, don't have to be a wizard. You don't have to be, um, you know, super technical, but I'm going to share my screen and go over some commands that you would need to know. If you're working IT, IT support, and these commands, you need to know them. Like, this is realistically, you should know about the command line because it's going to help you when you're trying to help someone or if you're going to work with a network admin or you can't just go to to someone's computer and be like, oh, uh, let me just take a look at it. And then you go and then the network admin's like, can you tell me what the IP address is of what that computer is? And you're like, uh, IP address? What is that? I don't know what that is. So you have to actually understand the command line and how to use it. So I'm going to share my screen. I do have a PowerPoint presentation that I want to go over. And uh, yeah, let me share my screen. I'm going to go over that real quick. So let me look over here to share my screen. Uh, screen to share. You should be able to see my screen. All right, so this, there's this one. This is the common command prompts. Um, slide two. So there's IP config, and I could literally show you how that works. So let me open up CMD, right? And I'm going to put it on this screen, the one that we're looking at. So there is IP config, right? So there's this. It's like this gives you your IP address. Your IP address comes from your um, uh, network service provider, right? So like it could be Verizon. It could be um, it could be Files. It could be whatever. Like whatever your, your service provider is, you get an IP address from that. Or you get an IP address from your network admin. If the network admin sets up switches and routers on under Cisco devices, then you'll get an IP address. It really depends on the company. But every, every computer that you work with has its own unique identifier or IP address. So mine would be 192.168.56.1. You see it right here. Um, now, the commands here are a little weird because you're like, okay. So if you do IP config, right, and then you do question mark, it gives you all the commands. And it tells you literally like, okay, what commands can you run? And it gives you more information about it. So if I do IP config all in this scenario, right, it will give me more information. So here is my IP IPv4 address. Here is my subnet mask. Lease obtained February 24, right? Lease expires 20. So, so what that means is, if you you guys know anything about IP addressing, is that this IP is is being is being um, rent out to to this computer which is 192.168.1.237, it's going to be expiring tomorrow, 25th. So I'm going to have a different IP address. It will not be the same. So that's what lease time means. So basically you're leasing out a number or an IP address. So it's only good till tomorrow. It's going to expire tomorrow. That's the reason why that's, come, that, that's coming up. And then you have your DHCP server. So every computer gets an IP from a server. So in this case, it will be the my my file server, and you know the IP address is being taken from that. But um, that's what it is. If that makes sense. And then in this scenario, like we have other different commands. You have other commands. Like sometimes your the the IP address is remember, you know it's about like the lease time. Sometimes the IP addresses expire, or or you need to get a new IP address. So what they do is they do release, and then you could do re <clears throat> renew, right? Excuse me. And you get a new IP address. So that's basically how you do it. And you get a new IP address. So that, that's what that is. And I'm, I'm going to leave this open just so you see it because I'm sharing my screen. And then the next command that you should know is about ping. So obviously ping, it allows you to, it's a message sent from one computer to another. So this is a common, right? So you do ping um, google.com. And then you get four replies, reply, reply, reply. That means that google.com is working. Now, when you restart a computer, like this is this is my this is my favorite command, where is it's um shut uh CMD, right? And I do I do shutdown minus I, right? And when you do shutdown minus I, you get this prompt right here, and then you can add a computer here and then you can reboot it, right? You can reboot computers on your network, right? So when you have a when you have a scenario like that, what you could do is you do ping and you put the name of the computer, what the IP address is, right? Uh, I'm going to just do google.com again as an example, and you can do minus T. And then this is a continuous ping. So basically you're pinging it over and over again 
since I rebooted the computer, it's going to show not responding, request timeout, request timeout, request timeout, and then the IP address will come back up again. So that's basically what this is. So you you want to run, you want to know about command line, and then if you want to get out of this, you do control C, and control C will actually get out of that screen if that makes sense. So hopefully that's some useful information. Um, we go to the next screen, right? And then you have what's called flush DNS, which will clear any IP addresses or other DNS records from your cache. And this can be resolved like security, internet connect connectivities, and other issues. So here, same thing. You don't got to be scared of this thing. IP config, right? And then you do flush DNS. And that's it. Simple as that. Nothing out of the ordinary, right? And then you have one that's called net accounts, which is my favorite one because in net accounts, when you do net accounts, Space, it tells you maximum password age is 42 days. Lockout threshold. So it's like how many times how many times um you get locked out, right? And then this is the length of the password complexity, like your password complexity. And then if you want to know more information about this, if you have Windows 10 Pro actually, you literally can open up group policy and you could you could go into group policy and then you could go in here and you go to security settings, you go to account lockout policies. Password policy is actually right there. So like here, literally is right here. So like I, I want to make these icons larger. Um, it's fine. I'll, I'll leave it like that. But here is the password complexity and how, how long the password is good for. So your group policy controls this. So every computer has a group policy set up on it when you go for an actual job, right? So you can actually change all this if you like. And then account lockout, there's no, there's no lockout policy. You could change it to something else if, if you like. It's entirely up to you. That's in group policy. So that's what this is. Does that make sense? All right. Go to the next screen. And then you have GP update force and GP update fo force. Um, you can take a screenshot of this or you could save it or take a picture or whatever. Um, basically, it's used to apply new or change group policies and often used with testing and creation of modifier of group policies and objects. And that's basically what it is. And on the right hand side, you see a, a chart. It says what difference between GP update and GP update force. Um, GP update force forcefully reapplies all policies for both new and old, ignores the regular refresh interval, used when immediate when used when immediate application of old policies is needed, significant changes, troubleshooting policy uh, issues. Um, higher as it reevaluates, reapplies old policies, and stuff like that. So that, that's basically what this is, if that makes sense. So if you want to run this command, and I, I could show you on the screen, you could do GP update force. And it's just trying to update the policy. I don't have group policy created on this computer because it's my personal computer, but this is how you would do it, right? And then it may prompt you to restart the computer or it may prompt you to log out of the computer. Now, not restart, log out. Like, please log out. Do you want to log out right now? Yes or no? And you put yes, it logs you out, and you got to log back in again. So you're running group policy, it does that. Um, EP update, question mark. So you do question mark, it gives you more information. So you have, you have GP update, GP update force, um, GP result. This is GP result dash R. This is, this is your group policies and group policies are, are permitted on this computer. And it tells you more information about what group policies are put on this PC or computer, All right? And it tells you what security groups I'm part of on this computer. So these are commands that are very useful for IT, if that makes sense. You have GP R, and then you have GP H, GP report. Now, if you want to get granular with this, you could do tap, 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 tap. It's not going to do anything, but, you know, it has some recommendations here of what to type in and that's what it is all right go to the next screen let me minimize that for a second and then you have changed directories remember i talked about this so like if you want to you're right now we're on c users kevin right so if you want to change your directory you could do that with, with with cd cd changes the directory of the location of a specific folder or whatever right you could change your directory so now we're on cd users kevin right but what if you want to do CD and then you want to get into the, the C folder only, right? C folder only. You want to do CD and you want to do users. 
you do CD, and you CD, and you do dash, and then you do users, right? And then you do Kevin, and then you do desktop, right? So here I'm gonna I'm gonna CD desktop. There we go. So now I'm on I'm on desktop. So here you could you could change the directory. Like that's basically what CD does. It changes the directory. You don't, you don't, you want to go to a different directory, and then if you want to see and I and I have a screenshot of this, but if you want to see what's in that directory, you just type dir, and it'll tell you like oh. I have Payday 2 installed. I have Slack installed on this directory. These are these are the icons that are on my desktop. I have Discord there. I have Counter-Strike Source there. I have Counter-Strike Source 2 there. I have Max Payne 3 there. Sleeping Dogs there. I have a study guide for the CompTIA Security Plus 601. So that, that's basically what it is, if that makes sense. All right? And then last but not least, we're almost done with this. Um, you can make a folder. So like I, I'm on desktop right now, right? But I could go to CD and I could go to users, right? I could do CD and then go do dash, uh, dash users, then dash Kevin, and then go to that directory, right? And then I could type MKDIR test three, right? Now there should be a folder in there. So if I go to my, my uh, com computer, right? And I'm going to put this on the screen, right? If I go to my computer and I go to local, local, users, Kevin, test three should be there. So test three is right there. And if I want to go even further into it and put a document in there and call it uh, Kevin, we can do that. So like I'm, I have a folder called, I have a, a folder, a document called Kevin now. Now, if I type, um, if I type CD slash test, three and then if i type dir it will show a folder there and that test doc that, that not a folder that document the document is called kevin so just to show you how that works if that makes sense. so this is to create a folder you create a folder doing mkdir if that makes sense okay and then dir which is what i went over already like 100 times dir is is to see what's in that folder so if i type dir um and, I'm, and i typed it over here so I'm going to do DIR, and it tells me what files are located under Kevin. And as you can see, it's a CD desktop. Then we could do CD uh, downloads. It says I'm going to find it, which is fine, not the end of the world. And then we could do CD, C, colon dash users, Kevin. Uh, Downloads, I'm in downloads, DIR. And I'll tell you all, this is all the files I have in DR. I have someone's resume here. I'm, I go over resumes and stuff like that. I have someone else's resume. I have Windows Defender here. I have some PDF files here. I have a bunch of stuff, your sample resumes, stuff like that. So that's what it is, all right? And last for now, these, um, you have NSLOOKUP. And NSLOOKUP is the abbreviation of um, a name sort of looked up. It allows you to query your DNS. You could do... NS, NS, look up google.com, and it'll tell you right there more information about it, the IP address, the server address, et cetera, et cetera. So that's pretty much it for me. Uh, I know it may seem a little boring for some people, that like, oh, this is boring, right? But some people, may, it may be, they may find this useful. You need to know about this, by the way. Even if for CompTIA stuff, you need to know how to do this. It's very important, especially if you're trying to troubleshoot an IT issue. Um, a lot of people that work IT, can you tell me the IP address? Can you ping that computer? Let's restart it. Can you change the directory? Can you make a folder? Can you run as admin on the command line? If you know how to do those things, those things are going to help you when you go 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 get a job in IT support. I mean, you don't got to know all the commands, but it's important that you understand how that works and what they do and, and how to use them, if that makes sense. All right? Hopefully this helps you out. With that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday and take care. Peace.